In this lesson, we are just going to practice for loops and go over the uh, concepts of loops and for loops just a little bit, but not in as much detail as in the original uh, loops and for loops video. Okay, so let's get into it, shall we? So a loop, what is a loop? Well, a loop is just a mechanism that allows a developer to, what does it allow them to do? execute code execute specific code should i say specific code multiple multiple times without having to copy and paste that code that's it really you know you, you can get more complicated versions of that but that's really it and a for loop. A for loop allows a developer to execute the same code a specific, um, I'll say over and over again, or I'll say repeatedly, repeatedly. Yeah? So it allows you to repeatedly execute the same code so you can execute the same code repeatedly uh, a specified amount of times for a specified range okay that's it that's all the explanation i'll give now and now i'm just going to make a quick follow right and I'll show you the range. So for, I don't know, count in range or for range, or is that, range isn't a key word apparently. Range in one, two, three. Print goodbye world. Just thought I'd do something different. You know, mix it up a little bit. <laughs> so there we go. And it prints out goodbye world three times. However, these numbers are not always, don't always show you how many iterations you're going to have. Okay. So in order to figure out how many iterations you uh, would have, a good thing to do is to like subtract. Um, the first number from the second number. So we would do 3 minus 1. That would be equal to 2. Subtract the lower bound from the upper bound. Okay. Then what you want to do is you want to add 1 to the, to the number. Add one to the new number. This number is the amount of iterations, i.e., the amount of times the code in a loop will be executed. Okay? That's just a little trick, quite a handy little trick, okay? Now then, let's see a couple of ways we might use a, I don't know, for loop. So we'll say for count five to eight, okay? And I'll show you a reason why you might want to start at five instead of starting at one. So let's say I want to get the squared value version of this value, right? And or, or all the values, I want to get the squared value of all the values from 5 to 8, including 5 and 8, right? So I want 5 squared, which is 5 times 5, which is 25, 6 squared, which is 36, and I want them all printed out, okay? So I want to print count times count, okay? So for every count, I want to print the count out times by itself. Simple enough. Wait, what? Expected. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't put the in there. 
in five. There we go. Now the ins there. That should work. Yep. So we get 25, 36, 49, 64. Here we can get squared the squared numbers of every single number in the range. Okay. But let's say we didn't want the number four. We didn't want the number three. We just want the numbers five to eight. And for that reason, we've started uh, with a lower bound of five and an upper bound of eight. Because these are the only numbers we want the squared values of. Okay. Simple enough. What is another reason we might want to use it for? We might want to use it for, I don't know, for count in, let's say, I don't know, three to six. Sum equals, oh, we've got to do sum outside of that. Yeah, what they there. So I'll just do sum outside of that here. So I'll put variable sum equals zero. We'll say that. Oops, I really hate this uh, sort of feature of the online Swift playing. It's not very well built, this. So we're going to say sum equals sum plus count. And then we're going to print sum. Okay, and we'll find out what the sums are. What? What's going on here? And did you mean dot, dot, dot? Yes, I did mean dot, dot, dot. I'm really tired, so sorry about that. Okay, so the sum here will be 3, okay, then 3 plus 4, which is 7, uh, 7 plus 5, which is 12, and 12 plus 6 for the last number, okay. That's a little bit confusing, I would say. So we're going to put a new variable, we'll call it variable sum 2 equals 0. And this time, for count in 3 to 6, we want to print a bit more detail than that, so... I'm going to say that sum is equal to sum plus count. And we're going to say print, um, well, we'll print string to sum, but we're going to print the count number is, da -da -da -da, and we'll get the string, oh, we'll put plus sign, we'll get the string of count plus da, 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 the sum so so far is and we'll just add the string of sum when we print this what we get instead is we get the count number oh, I'll just have to put a space there just do that again a bit neater so it tells us what the count number is so what this value is and we can see that the sum so far is 21 oh i've used this i needed to actually use sum two not someone hold on just rectify that uh sum two here da -da -da -da. Right, run that again okay so the sum so far is three because the number is three and then we add the four here this count number two that sum and it's seven we got the count number five here and we add that to the seven and it's 12 count number six there and we add that to the sum here and it becomes 18. by doing this you know it's just a bit neater we can kind of see uh, the logic behind this summarization you know so that's that's the whole reason for doing this anyway this was just a little bit of practice i hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching